Hey, hello everybody, it's Dr. Steve back with another episode of Core Wellness TV Three Pillars Edition. The mindset piece today, I'm going to show you how you can instantly switch into a place of calm and peace when you're feeling anxiety. In the, in the movement piece, we're going to talk about the importance of ankle mobility and the power of doing it with a couple of very specific exercises and how it can improve your balance and how it can improve your gait and how it can improve knee pain, hip pain, all kinds of stuff like that. And in the nutrition piece, I'm going to be talking about a magic mineral that brings a calm to your body. When we live in a, a stressed out, hyper anxiety world, we all need a little bit of calm, which helps your sleep, helps muscle spasms, cramps, and things like that. Okay, mindset piece, number one. Uh, Quick story, I was in Walmart walking through the grocery store section part of the store and I was having crazy judgment thoughts about all the people in there who were, you know, who were extremely overweight and disabled and limping around and driving their motorized carts and buying all of the, uh, the uh, enriched flour products and soda pop and all the junk that food like substances, right? And I found myself getting anxious and, and, and judgmental, and I said, bam, boy, that's the magic thing to do, is to catch yourself when you start thinking that you're better than somebody else. Bull, right? Stop yourself. And all you have to do, this is what I do, is I make a mental switch into, I see them as me. I know that they are another part of me, right? We are all one. Whenever I first make that switch, then I can look right to the center of their soul and find their spirit and communicate with that peace and bless that peace. When I see the beauty and the innocence in every person and every object I observe, automatically my shoulders relax, peace physiology takes over, and healing begins. There's your trick. You catch yourself in judgment, find the beauty, find the peace in every single person you observe. A silent blessing to their spirit as you walk by. A silent blessing to their spirit as you walk by. There it is. That's the peace. That's how you can have it in an instant. It will change your perception just like it changed mine a few days ago. Okay, I just wanted to share that. Uh, the physical peace today is the importance of getting through your ankle. You see that motion, that movement that has to happen in your ankle? As you, as you walk, you have to have a certain amount of what's called dorsiflexion or ankle mobility. If you don't have that mobility, okay, if you don't have that mobility, it's going to stop you from doing an effective squat, right? How many times have you gone down and you can't go because your heels come off the ground, so you can't squat down and lift things effectively. You, you're going to if you don't have good motion through there, you will compensate by, because you, you, need to, you need to get forward in your gait cycle. So if you don't get it in your ankle, you're going to get it by rolling your foot in. So you can actually make more forward progress whenever you let your ankle go towards the floor like this. And this is why a lot of us fall into the very, very flat feet. And when you do that, when your feet roll in like that, then your, your, your tibia rolls in, then your femur rolls in, and then when that happens, it throws your pelvis out. And now what's it look like? Lower cross syndrome, cross posture syndrome, right? So sometimes it starts at the feet. And it, it's not because you necessarily have fallen arches. It's because you don't have enough mobility in your ankle. Okay, so actually what I'm doing there, that, that's a legitimate ankle mobility exercise. You try and keep your heel on the ground, lean forward, okay? Get on the edge of a stair and let your, your legs stretch off that way. Let you get some length in your calves, okay? The one I very specifically like, and, and I prescribe this for a lot of people, and especially if you happen to be a supinator like I am, I hang out on the outside of my feet a lot, like this. And so I have to really be conscious of making sure that I get enough what's called pronation in the, in the ankle. So uh, otherwise, if I don't have that movement, then I'm getting a lot more stress up through my, up into my knee because I'm not dissipating the force as I walk. This is kind of a, the opposite problem of having too much pronation and not having any pronation. But 
I like this movement in general to get ankle mobility, to reach back, reach back behind you, and try to drive your heel into the, the, into the floor like that. Actually, try to drive your arch into the ground. Okay, show you from behind, reach back. I call it the dance move, right? Because it's kind of a dance move, like that. Another way you can get into that is to put your heel or put your, excuse me, your, your foot up against the wall and try to bring your knee towards the wall, okay? And just nice and easy, trying to get a little bit further every time. If you did that 10 times on each side, every day, a couple of times a day, I think what you'll see, what I'm doing there is a, it also, that also stretches the plantar fascia. So if you have plantar fasciitis, heel pain, especially that first step in the morning when you get up and you step on the floor and you go, ah, plantar fasciitis, this will help that, should help that. Okay, I'm not guaranteeing it'll help it, but it goes along the whole idea of stretching out that whole posterior line. And the reason that stuff gets tight to begin with for most people is that we spend so much time with our, our, with our heads and our shoulders in front of our gravity line that we have to keep the back side of our back, our hamstrings, our calves, and all of this whole posterior line, as it called, contracted so we don't fall on our face. Right? So there's a good reason why you should always have everything in line. And you, you get that, remember, by the, just the, always the concept of pushing away from support points at all times. And that's the, uh, the intentional move for reversing cross posture syndrome. So get some ankle mobility and do that every day. And I think you'll start noticing a big difference in knee pain, even hip pain, and even uh, you know, pain and stress in general in your body. Okay? And also it'll improve your balance because now your brain is communicating with your, your, you're waking up all of the mechanoreceptors, they're called, your feelers or your sensors in your ankle and foot and now your brain has more information to work with so now it's got a, it can help you balance uh, more easily and more readily so you'll improve your coordination and balance as well right so nutrition magnesium is the magic mineral it's the calmer it's nature's calmer all right how do you know if you need it if you're stressed, if you're living a stressed out lifestyle and you eat a poor diet, you are magnesium deficient. I can nearly guarantee it, okay? Because why? Because the stress system burns up a lot of magnesium, so it's part of the fuel that helps you get through the stress response, so you use up a lot of magnesium when you're under stress. And on top of that, if you are stressed, you also pee out your minerals more readily, so you pee out this, your too much magnesium, so you're using it up and you're peeing it out. And to, uh, to add to that, if you're a, usually a coffee drinker, coffee drink, coffee makes you spill a lot more magnesium out of your urine as well. So these are all things that can lead to magnesium deficiency. A classic example is um, muscle cramps and spasms, um, kind of anxious, uh, doesn't sleep real well. Um, it's actually a, a classic physiognomy of a magnesium deficient person is like a tall, slender female. Um, mitral valve prolapse, if you have that, that's a big indicator of magnesium deficiency. So these are all little signs and signals that you can look at. Um, uh, it's really important for neurological health because uh, it's kind of like the bouncer at the door that doesn't allow the nerves to fire, 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 fire. That's what happens. We get excitotoxins in our life through um, like uh, the, the, what do you call it, uh, aspartame and stuff like that, and artificial sweeteners, those kind of things make our brains go like tick, 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 right? It, it, excitotoxins, as they're called. And magnesium stands at the door and says, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just relax here, right? That's magnesium's job is to calm that activity down, calm down that storm. So very important for relaxation of muscles, relaxation of the nervous system. Where do you get it? Hey, it's the central ion of the, mag or of the, of the chlorophyll molecule, so it plants. It, magnesium takes the sun's energy, turns it into plant energy that we consume. So it's like little packaged sunlight, packaged photonic power is magnesium. So you get it in green food. Green, guys, chlorophyll, green. Magnesium, tons of magnesium in green, fresh food. Where else? 
Beans have a lot of magnesium. Nuts and seeds, okay? So you incorporate nuts and seeds, beans and greens into your diet. You're going to crank up your magnesium, and especially if you're stressed. You've got to eat that stuff. And just by starting to eat foods like that, you're going to become less stressed because the sugar and caffeine and alcohol and all that kind of stuff, that causes more stress in your body. So you can reduce your stress levels by improving your nutrition. So you can get rid of nutritional stress, you start getting rid of mental emotional stress by getting out of the judgment piece and into the seeing everyone's beauty and love inside, right? And then, of course, uh, you start getting your body uh, more stacked up and centrated, and that also causes calm into your nervous system when you become efficient movers and you have an efficient posture and efficient breathing. Then you've got calm there, right? And then you don't spill as much magnesium. Then you don't need as much magnesium because you're not spilling it and you're not using it up. You see how this all works together? Okay. Uh, so um, a couple of, I use, do use supplementation of magnesium sometimes when people come in with uh, conditions, like if they're not sleeping and they're just anxious and jittery and uh, have restless leg syndrome. I'll use magnesium and I'll, I'll give some pretty hefty doses of like magnesium glycinate, which is a better absorbed form. Uh, because it's tagged with uh, an amino acid, it's kind of chelated as it's called, and it gets better absorbed uh, versus like magnesium oxide, uh, which is like the cheap magnesium that you would buy in most like Centrum and the multivitamins and things like that, the cheap over-the-counter stuff. Um, basically, it just goes right through you and, uh, you know, out it goes because it just draws water in your stool and out it goes. Uh, so it doesn't get absorbed very well. So magnesium glycinate is, what I like, is the form I like to use when I want to get it into the cells. And if I want to stimulate a bowel movement, I'll use magnesium citrate because it's a little easier on the system. You still absorb a little bit of it, um, but it's great for stimulating bowel movements. I'll use like 400 milligrams before you go to bed at night and see how the morning bowel movement goes. And a lot of times that in and of itself can get you kick-started back into a normal healthy rhythm as you start drinking more water, eating more fiber, eating more beans and greens, right? Because that's uh, a great way to get fiber as well and uh, help with all that uh, congestion in the bowel. So, uh, all right guys, I think that covers it, right? Mindset, movement, and nutrition, the three pillars of core wellness. And I hope you benefited from that. There's a lot of good information in there. Just take one little thing if you just take one of the three and worked on it or find out what resonates with you the most and, and just focus on something. The key is don't just learn it, do it. Take action. Make one step, even if it's just uh, making a, a pact to yourself that the next person you see or the next time that someone, uh, something comes up for you in a person that causes you anxiety, just stop and find the beauty and the love in that person. Get, move, move apart the fog and find the truth inside. And just doing that will <laughs> help everything work a lot better for you. Peace physiology, baby. That's what it's all about. All right, guys. Uh, if you have uh, comments, questions down below, post me a comment. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you go to the URL that's in the description box down below if you would like some interaction. Okay? Have a great day, and let me know what you think. Bye-bye.